to let it soak it in, you know? Yeah. It's like a flower in the rain. You just let it in. Okay, so our next guest is here to talk about his lifelong goal of riding a horse in zero gravity. How he had the Christmas tree song, Oh Christmas Tree, stuck in his head for over two years and dealt with it through many therapy sessions and the things that he learned. And how he created Zappos Insight, the B2B wing of Zappos.com that trains thousands of companies in culture, engagement, customer service, leadership, and innovation. And he is also the author of this book. It's called The Culture Blueprint. And we're going to hear a little bit about what you've been up to while you're writing this. So please put your hands together and cheer ridiculously loud and long for our next guest, Robert Richmond. Thank you very much. Wow. All right. Yeah. Do, do, do you guys play drinking games on the show here? Mm -hmm. Yeah? Yeah, no. Yeah, wait, you got one? I, I got you got one. a new one for I us? I got one. The, the, the game is <laughs> you have to take a drink or a shot every time somebody says the word the. Oh, oh my. <laughs> oh my, that would be wild. <laughs> well, does it count for the audience? Do we? Yeah. Well, I guess we'll need the intern to bring more beer out, so we'll see how that goes. But first off, let me talk to you about uh, this book. So you say in it that um, the Vatican isn't the most spiritual place on earth? Is that what I hear? Oh, well, that's separate from the book. Oh, I didn't read it yet. You <laughs> gave it to me. <laughs> <laughs> no. But stuff like that can be inferred after reading this and becoming equally smart. This is the most spiritual city in the world. Like, that's... That's like three does already. What? It's, that's three does already in your first sentence. <laughs> that's... It's like, this is... Like, there's like fun and then there's just too much. Right. But we'll just... Right. It's all right. It's all right. You set the rules. Yeah. So, I don't know. I just had fun looking into this. That uh, The first person who said this, that Vegas is the most spiritual city in the world. You want me to keep drinking? Is that what that is? <laughs> it was a joke. The game is a joke, people. Um, so, it was actually the first person to say Vegas is the most spiritual city in the world. It was Deepak Chopra. Because okay. he said it's the only city that really embraces fully what it is. It doesn't try to pretend to be something that's not. about Vegas? Yeah. And then I started to look for it. Deepak, there are clues. Huh? Yeah, clues all over. So think about it this way, like all the casinos, the, those big, huge monolithic buildings that are out there, mm -hmm. they are the new cathedrals. And so people make pilgrimage here, 40 million people a year, to worship the food, sex, money, entertainment gods. Yeah, I guess that's true. And it's like got this odd religious overtone there. I hear so, people praying to that. One they, yeah, and, and all day long, long, yeah. Right, but I mean, and, 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 uh, and, and think about it this way, when, when it reduces you to nothing, mm -hmm. like, you know, then it's like the VH1 yeah. behind the music story where they, you hit rock bottom, and that's where everything gets better. That's where you find your true soul. So the city reduces you to nothing if it has to, <laughs> just to get you to see what's real. I think I see your positive message in there. There's, yeah, yeah, that's really they're cool. All over. The one I discovered recently <laughs> was that, you know, the, the whole phrase, like, let there be light. God said, let there be light, right? So the idea with that is that Vegas has more light per capita than any other city. Oh, yeah. It's got with, at night, and, but then also during the day, there's more than 300 totally sunny days a year. So day or night, Vegas has the most light out of any city. What's that pyramid building? Luxor, maybe? Luxor, yes. That's probably where he hangs out. Okay. Mm. Um, <laughs> So you talked, uh, so I watched a, another interview with you because I was preparing for this one. Mm -hmm. And you talked about how a parent who has 15 babies can help them yeah. learn lessons. Maybe we could share that if anybody has lots of babies. <laughs> I have 15 babies, how do I? Okay. So the, how do I deal with that? <laughs> the context for this, wow, you really read it drunk, didn't you? <laughs> The context for this was the book talks about how to find your core values and really have it within a company. And the idea being, why would you do this? Why would it be a good idea to run a company by core values? And the corollary of the story, the analogy, is, is that a guy who had 15 kids was asked, how the heck do you do it? How do you manage 15 kids? And he said, simple, you have very few rules. And that's how you do it. And I think the two rules were be polite and be safe. And everybody had to live by those rules, and that's how he had order in the family. Rather than gotcha. trying to prescribe every rule in the book and try to manage every single little kid. So he's relating every, he's hoping the kids probably relate the problem to that bigger value system, right? Right? The, the, or am I, yeah, well, okay. Oh my God. <laughs> what, what I'm saying is like, yeah. But I'm saying like, you have Are two value systems. Are we in the already? Like, no. I thought that comes after the clip. I was trying to be real smart. <laughs> like, I thought that was my goal, you know? Like, you have a value system. Be nice to people, you know? It's everything. Yes. All right. <laughs> okay. I guess I can't handle 15 babies. All right. Um, so you like improv, I heard? You're yeah, I just came bit. from there tonight, actually. This was the first oh, time. Oh, you did? Yeah. 
just before this. This was the first time we since did. Since we talked and, and yeah, before this, you since okay. we talked. Today. Oh, okay, so you already did a, an improv scene. Yes. Okay, good. We did, yeah. You're geared up for it. And what's the thing you taught me? You always say, and. Yes, and. Okay, explain that to them. So and how the, that relates to entrepreneurs. It's, it's this concept with an improv called yes and. So the idea is that you don't deny something. That, that somebody says, oh, I drove up in a Ferrari. You don't say, no, you don't. That was a Porsche because it, it, it ruins the scene. So right. you have to just say yes and and go with it and let it build on it. And what I'm realizing that as a training is amazing because um, it's like reality training. You have to yeah. talk about like pivot in a lean startup. It's all about saying, okay, this is what happens. It's, it's happening. This is what's real. How can I embrace this and say this should be happening and then do something from there? So every time you think something's going wrong, just saying, yes, and this is the reality. I'm embracing it and then moving forward from there. Okay. I, I really did like that. I think that's pretty cool. So I wanted to hear this story about how Tony Shea bought you 10 shots and you blacked out. And mm. then when you black out, I thought we could start playing a fictional version of and then. Or it's called and then, right? So you said? Yes, and. Okay. Oh, yes, and. So we'll start yes, and after that, okay? <laughs> So, so you tell the real story until yeah. the blackout happens. Okay. And then I'll yes and You'll, the rest of the story. Oh, perfect. Yeah. Perfect. Be kind okay. of a nice mix of lies and truth. Got it. Yeah. Cool. All right, I'll roll with that. So, yeah, this was like five years ago. And um, I'll get to the moral really quick. The moral is never make a bet with Tony Shea because he, he will always win. He's just that smart a guy. And it was a long story with the bet. But when, what I was used to with my friends was that when you bet shots or drinks or like a pitcher of margaritas is that you have that as like a, a, a bank stock. And I can say if I won 10 shots from you, then tonight I'm going to take three. And then tomorrow night I'm going to get four, right? Okay. But the way Tony did it was he just bought all 12 at once. Ooh. And we were out at this kind of going night. all it's all in strategy. Yeah, yeah, I hadn't had much to eat. I had uh, like Advil, and I just <laughs> for dinner. It's <laughs> kind of. Okay. And so I just started taking these down. And the next thing I know, you know, when you kind of get like that blurred, that double vision, when you're when when you're drinking. For some yeah, reason, I got it right now. <laughs> yeah, right there, yeah, exactly. So <laughs> double interviews. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I had that, but everything was crystal clear. Like I would see two of you and two of you, and I just that was the last clear moment. Okay. And, and there was a dance floor involved, by the way. I'll give you a little more context here. Oh, yeah. Yes. Yes, and. Okay. So then you black out and you find a purple porcupine. Yes. And I started <laughs> dancing the merengue with the purple porcupine. My God. Did it hurt? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yes, and it was also very sexy. Okay. Um, <laughs> Oh, I, I have to do it too, right? Because it's a back and forth thing. Oh, you can. You don't have to say yes, and you just you just keep you just roll with it. So, like, what okay. what happened on the sexy dancing with the porcupine? Gotcha. Okay, so then the porcupine uh, confused about how he didn't know if he wanted to be a tightrope walker. Oh, I don't know. Right, and then suddenly there was a tightrope right there, and he was going to walk on it, and he got, went on it, but he'd had six drinks, so. So he decided to join a marching band. Yes. And the marching band was a techno marching band, and suddenly all these disco lights came on, and everybody was dancing techno. Wow. Great story yeah. with Tony Shea. <laughs> Good job with that. I like it. Don't quote that one. Uh, I don't know if you could quote it in context. How people can get in touch with you if they're curious to learn more about this crazy night you had. LinkedIn oh, is geez. a good resource. LinkedIn, sure. Robert Richmond there. The uh, cultureblueprint.com or robertrichmond.com. Happy to connect. Okay. And then in this book, give me a quick summary. What can, why, why should an entrepreneur take this book, read it, yeah. and apply it to their life? Basically, because once you get to that point where the business model is actually proven and you've, you, you start to grow, you start to realize as an entrepreneur that you're not really running things. It's the culture, it's the, the company. And if you don't get a hold of it and actually actively design the culture, then the, tra the, the train can really go off the rails. Yes. So this is a whole plan to, to keep it on the rails and empower people in a way that uh, helps you reach your goals. So glad we got that out. That was the whole point of why you <laughs> exist. Yeah, and I almost missed it, so thank you. It's all right. All right, I think we should give him one of our, one of our famous uh, cheers songs. What do you guys think? We've been practicing this for a couple episodes. This is our new drinking song. 